Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the DCS uh, Hornet Academy uh, lesson number uh, 8 which is a basic flight and the HUD and the autopilot. So congratulations first of all if you've made it this far um, means you are the right uh, type of person and student pilot to be continuing on this journey because it shows that uh, you've had the patience to go through all the boring stuff uh, without jumping into the cockpit and learning the things um, properly before jumping on. So great to uh, hear that or see that. Um, so finally, uh, you know, your patience is going to be rewarded uh, with um, you know your first time here flying uh, on this course so I'm just setting my bingo here our joker fuel so that uh, we do have 12 and a half pounds so let's uh, just double checking that alrighty so the first time um, I'm assuming first time let's pretend that it, this is your first time in the Hornet so you bought DCS you uh, let's, first of all let's try a right turn so um, while, while I talk here. Uh, so you bought DCS, uh, you figure out what it is, you said, hey, yes, I want to learn that, I want to become a naval aviator, I want to learn the F-18, I think that sounds great. Uh, you went through the first lessons, you figured out bindings and modules, and you, you figured out um, how to bind things, and uh, you figured out how to cold start the aircraft, you know what things look like in the cockpit, what they are, um, you watch some videos, some extra videos, you've done your homework, so by this time you should be A, number A, number A, <laughs> number one, familiar with the Hornet cockpit and what most of these buttons do. Um, second, you should have uh, practiced your cold starts, uh, so you kind of have an idea of not only what each button does, but uh, you know, a little practice uh, using those buttons. And uh, you also should be familiar with the knee board, uh, like this guy right here. Uh, and uh, also with the mission editor, so that, for example, you would be in a position to know how to set up um, this flight here. For example, um, we are at roughly 15,000 feet. 250 knots and um, you would be able to set this up you now know how to set this up and be in this position that I'm in and you can uh, go ahead and practice this uh, lesson you know after we've gone through the, the instruction part of it so um, first of all let's get started all right so what we're covering in this lesson is uh, we are covering basic flight and as I mentioned the HUD and the autopilot so we're gonna cover for example how am I doing this right now how am I by the way I'm not touching the anything I'm, I'm just talking to you guys I'm playing my stick and my throttle they're just chilling out there I don't I'm hands off and uh, you know maintaining speed and altitude and um, I'm not doing anything, I'm just the Hornet is just flying itself, I'm just doing the circles and, and uh, observing, uh, you know, the beautiful countryside here, um, the Georgian countryside. And so we will teach you how to do that. Um, but, uh, and then we're going to go over the HUD. So, um, the first thing is, um, yes, the HUD. I think the HUD is going to be the first thing we talk about. Uh, first of all, we're not going to talk about, you saw that I turned all my screens off, um, they're like in a menu mode, so we're not going to worry about any of that. Um, what you should do is set your bingo, uh, just as a habit, so you don't run out of fuel, but it's not really important. Uh, everything else in the jet is kind of good to go, our RWR is off, um, everything is good to go. So you don't have to worry about any of that, don't have to worry about radios and comms or any of it. The only thing that we're going to talk about in this lesson is the HUD and the autopilot and basic maneuvers in the air. 
uh, the, less, the next lesson we're going to talk about slow because we're going to apply those things to be able to do slow flight and uh, installs and in the lesson after that we're going to test the limit of the Hornet um, just throwing it around uh, and after that we're going to go into airfield procedures so before uh, you can see Kobuleti right here let's uh, do a bit of a left turn uh, around Kobuleti uh, you can see Kobuleti is right there typically we were we would be right here on the third uh, spot um, and uh, when we go and do airfield operations more, li more than likely we will um, set the wind so we use this runway here and yeah we were going to be coming in doing landings pattern work and all of that stuff but before we get anywhere near an airfield um, just like in real life when you do the training in real life um, you don't start with uh, landings and takeoffs right away at least not on your own uh, what will happen is you will go with an instructor like if this was your first time in a hornet and you would just uh, go ahead and start doing basic maneuvers um, and you know feel out what uh, the airplane I guess um, this could be for people who have never flown in any sim whatsoever as well so um, maybe I will touch a, real li a little bit on that as well make it super simple but I won't um, um, you know go too much into the detail so, all right, let's get started. So I guess uh, where, where to start? All right, let's. Uh, um, I'm I'm thinking if I should start from the HUD or the, the basic uh, aerodynamics, but uh, yeah, screw it. Let's start from the. Let's start from the HUD. All right. So Z HUD uh, has. Uh, basically, okay, let's start from the time. This is your timer, uh, 607 currently, and if you click, um, so the things related to the HUD I will probably talk about. So if you click on the menu and you go to HSI and then you go to time UFC, uh, and if I go to L, this is local time, 10, it's 10 and 07 um, in the morning here uh, over Kobuleti and I did that by saying L to so local time right if you press a Z it will be Zulu time so that is UFC um, coordinated time and it's 608 so that's all I'm gonna cover there and if I do time UFC again um, you know, it 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 get rid of that. So to get this menu on the uh, upfront control panel, you press this first. You go to HSI, then you press Time UFC, and uh, there you go. That's that's all you gotta do. So, uh, so we will keep it on a Zulu time. Actually, you know what? Let's just put it on local time. Why not? It's, it's, uh, it's ten in the morning. All right. Above that, you have your uh, G meter. So we are doing 1.0 G's right now because we're pulling no G's. So when we say pulling G's in an aircraft, it means that you are loading the aircraft uh, and applying forces to it by generally by churning in some sort of direction. Um, by pulling on the stick up or down. And um, the G's uh, are multi factors of so 1g is the pull of gravity right now um, means 9.81 meters per second squared um, is the you know it's gravity pulling you down at 1g um, and if I uh, you know went down you see there it goes below zero and if I went up it goes above zero so now I'm pulling like 2g's or so so there you go. Uh, let's go back to uh, our hold. That's G's. Uh, the Hornet has a limit of 7.5 G's, above which you, you're if you pull back on a stick, it would just won't let you go past 7.5 G's, unless you pull the paddle. 
the paddle is a little button that you can actually see here um, behind, well you can't see it, but it's behind the stick and we will look at controls here shortly on that uh, when you pull the paddle you, it allows you to overstress your um, aircraft but the ground crew won't like you because then they have to do an inspection uh, to see if anything was bent uh, but yeah in theory you could pull like nine or more G's and typically that's where uh, most pilots start to black out around over nine to ten G's right I don't know if you've seen uh, Maverick the movie um, you will probably get a sense you probably already know what the G's are and enough, enough of the G talk uh, right above it is a Mach number Mach is um, basically an indication of uh, how close you are to the speed of sound and we're accelerating here so let me uh, turn back so we're doing Mach 0.66 uh, and we're slowing down right now so Mach 1 is the speed of sound Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound Mach 3 is three speed, three times the speed of sound uh, and so on and so forth Anything over Mach 5 is considered hypersonic, anything over Mach 1 is considered supersonic, anything um, under Mach 1 is called subsonic, anything near Mach 1 is called transonic. Alright, get that out of the way. The Hornet is capable of Mach 1.8 maximum speed, and uh, at low altitude it can barely break Mach 1, so yeah. And the Mach 1 is typically close to 700 knots at uh, this altitude. So anyways, enough of the Mach. This little thing is Alpha, is a Greek symbol. And it uh, means um, it's the symbol for angle of attack. Uh, right now it's 4 degrees. Um, to understand the angle of attack, we would have to go through some ground school. and. Um, we're probably gonna cover that somewhere else so but for the purpose of uh, this lesson we don't really need to know what angle of attack is uh, except that okay basically angle of attack is the angle uh, you see the wing on the Hornet uh, from the front to the back uh, it's called the cord um, that angle the angle between that and the air that is going towards the wing, that difference between that angle is called the angle of attack. Okay. So it's between the, the wing, you can you could think of it the angle between the wing and the air that's coming towards it. And the wing the cord is the line between the leaning edge and the trailing edge of the wing. Alright. Um Okay. This box top left is your speed indicated in knots, nautical miles per hour. It's, um, yeah, that's what that is. Um, and that's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, there's other speeds like two air speeds and uh, you know calibrated speeds and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know where the if any, I think the true air speed, I'm not sure where that's shown. I think it's shown somewhere. Um, but here on the HSI, um, actually, it's, yeah, there you go, it's 359 true. So it's two, our indicated airspeed is 292, our true airspeed is 359, and our ground speed is 359. So ground speed is the speed we're doing over the ground, uh, and it has to do with wind. So if we have a headwind, we will be slower. If we have a tailwind, we'll be faster. Um, so it's basically indicated airspeed plus or minus the tailwind or headwind. True airspeed has to do with uh, the way that the aircraft calculates speed and we're not going to go into that but that's just yeah we're not going to go into that not here. Going on top this is the heading tape mm, so the and it is in magnetic it's kind of like the compass, which uh, the Hornet should have a compass somewhere in theory as well, as a backup instrument. I don't know where it is. Maybe it doesn't. But think of it as a compass. So we're going, um, so three, think about the 360 degree circle, uh, where 090 is east, 360 is north, 270 is west. Um, actually, if I go to the F10 map, 
there should be a rose here so let's go to do that so you see here it says compass, compass rose so um, you see a zero uh, or you know eight zero 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 or three sixty is basically north one eight zero is south um, zero nine zero is east zero two seven zero is west then you get all these numbers in between that tell you anything between those coordinates um, the uh, difference um, so that is like true north right the actual north uh, is magnetic uh, the difference so you have true north and magnetic north magnetic north is what your compass and your heading tape will indicate uh, and it is this inner circle so you see that the north here is slightly offset so uh, if you think of yes that's north and this is south on the Black Sea but um, you know magnetic north is offset by six and a half degrees to the right of true north and uh, it's, it is called vari var uh, variance and uh, the variance is 6.7 degrees so to get magnetic heading you have to add 6.7 so 0 true is 6.7 magnetic and a 0 magnetic is um, or sorry 6.7 magnetic is 0 true anyways that's the compass and um, yeah that's all there is to the compass so right now we're going to 320 magnetic 315 magnetic 3310 and so on and so forth um, there you go. While we're talking about that, let's go and look at Kabuleti. Might as well. Runways. They are in two digit numbers. 07 is this way and the opposite is 100 degrees opposite which is 25. So the reason for that is because this is 250. So they take out the last digit so this is a, a runway that's heading roughly east so remember east was 09 uh, 090 so one that faced from purely east would be 090 uh, but this is a 07 so um, and these are you know magnetic they're not true I'm pretty sure um, and if we click on this thing here show ruler we go to the center of the runway with right click and then we go to the center to the other side and left click or right click again what does it say that is a zero seven a zero true and zero six three magnetic so there you go um, so my bad uh, so the zero seven is in um, sorry let me make sure we're not crashing or anything here we're not uh, so yeah, this runway is a 070 true and 063 magnetic. So, and the uh, same is opposite for this. So it is the direction of the runway. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little thing about that. All right, uh, so next we have the altitude. This is your altitude in, in feet uh, barometric. Now if you switch this thing here to radar, you'll see um, typically you'll see a NAR but radar has a limit of how high it can be before um, like like about 5000 or something like that it stops really working um, so this is your um, altitude above sea level uh, and it will change based on this number here so if I change this pressure indication on my altimeter to say 2011 uh, first of all it will say that 3011 uh, it's been changed so like right now I'm on a constant altitude of 14420 but let's change this look at that it's, it's actually as I'm changing it's changing my altitude now is 3330 and if I go back to 42 it says 260 so you see that there's over almost 200 feet difference and when you're in the instrument flying conditions it makes a difference this is basically it uses pressure to calculate your altitude and if your pressure is not correct uh, it's not going to calculate it correctly 
B means that you're trying to get radar, uh, but it's flashing because it's just too high and not able to detect the group ground. So if you switch this back, it's going to go away. Uh, this is your uh, altitude uh, above sea level, so ASL is above sea level. Um, so if you have a, if you have a mountain that's thirteen thousand feet, uh, your altitude would be um, you know fourteen to sixty above sea level, uh, but it would be one thousand two hundred and sixty above ground level or AGL. AGL is doesn't care about sea level; it just cares how far you're from the ground, and the radar altimeter measures that. ATC is just uh, means automatic throttle control when you have it engaged it shows ATC it manages your throttle to maintain a specific speed the last thing that we're going to talk about the last two things is um, uh, these vertical bars are your um, ladder as we call it um, so basically uh, if you pitch up uh, this means you're five degrees above, pitched up above, um, and this, if you're pitching down, this means you're in on basically level, right? Uh, if it's a, a dotted line, it means it's your you're inverted or you're going down, and uh, you know this is five degrees down, ten ten degrees, and so on forth. If you wanted three degrees, for example, three degrees is your standard uh, tack and approach. It would be somewhere around there. This little plain-looking thing, the circle with the wings and the tail, that is your velocity vector. It is an extremely important thing that is indicating where your aircraft is heading. So, right now, if I did this, it would basically say that I'm going to head and hit the mountain at that spot. If I kept doing what I did, if I did this and put it right on top of that just above the mountain I would be sure that I would never hit that mountain right so that's the velocity vector uh, and this E2 thingy is let's just ignore that I'll just remove it from the HUD it's a uh, lot uh, electronic warfare related stuff the last thing is your angle of bank so this right here uh, shows your angle of bank so, um, I think these, I'm trying to remember, I think this is 30, and this is 5, so I think this is 5, 30, and is this 60 or 45? Good question, huh? That looks like 45. It's probably 45, and that's probably 60. Yeah, it looks like more than 45. Anyways, um, so 45, 30. Yeah, because when you're um, in carrier ops, you want to be basically 27 degrees, which is kind of right around here, right next to this guy. So, I think. No, that's 30. Yeah. Yeah, that's 30. Sorry, guys. Because in carrier ops, you want to be close to this. Yeah, this is more than the angle that you would uh, do. All right. Um, let's uh, head back towards Kobuleti real quick. And talk about basic maneuvers. Now that we've gone over the HUD. Let's climb back up. Alrighty, so basic maneuvers. If you want to be, I don't have any autopilot off on right now. So, first thing you're going to try to do is level flight and a constant speed. So, let's try to go for 350 knots and 12,000 feet. So, you want to basically go to three, adjust your throttle until you're at 350, and then you pitch down. Um, the last thing I forgot to mention is this number here is your descent or ascent rate in feet per minute so so try to uh, you know practice uh, the first thing you're gonna practice is level flight with level speed so you would go uh, try to get to 12,000 feet and 350 knots 
or whatever altitude you choose and try to align the plane and the throttle and I'm not using any um, autopilot right now so uh, yeah let's try that that's the first thing you should try to do when you're in the Hornet uh, try to go with constant speed and uh, you know constant altitude all right uh, the next thing uh, that you want to try to do is a uh, level turn. So try a right turn. Uh, and try to maintain speed, roughly, and your altitude. So try to keep that velocity vector on that horizontal bar. And try to increase your throttle to say 350 and try to maintain altitude and speed it gets harder when you try to uh, do more angle of bank for that uh, you basically have to add more power uh, as you're nose dips and you have to start pulling more on your stick so you have to basically um, you pull more on the back stick uh, and then you try to basically uh, so we're a bit low we're a bit fast so let's try to climb so put the velocity vector just above the horizon and increase your throttle again to get it back to 350 so this is a constant two and a half G turn and uh, trying to be level and uh, obviously I'm not doing a perfect job at it um, and uh, yeah so if you basically increase the speed if I put my throttle forward my speed increases right my radius of my turn increases if I pull back on the stick I reduce my turn uh, radius and increase my rate of turn and I increase my G's so you see my I'm not, this is now uh, a 3G, 4G 5G turn right and I'm losing altitude so I'll try to go back uh, reduce speed a bit let's try a full um, by the way cage on cage button uh, if you want to cage your didn't work very well. Maybe it's just my track by error. Um, so again, this is probably very advanced. I, uh, you know, but it's something that you you, you can uh, try to work on um, further down the line. Um, this is I was going to cover this in high G maneuvers much uh, down the line, but that basically um, gives you an idea. You can do the same thing on the left. Uh, now let's try a left turn, 350, climbing at uh, 500 or 1,000 feet per minute, how about that? So increase throttle. Uh, so it doesn't take very much, right? So to be 1,000 feet, it's like nothing. So let's try like 3,000 feet per minute. Or like, yeah, 25, something like that, right? 2,000 feet like a steady climb increase your uh, speed to 350 Two th so this is a 350 knot 2000 feet per minute climb in a, level, in a turn to do the same on the down you just pull back on the throttle and then you pitch down now we're going to do a roughly 2,000 foot per minute descent and we see that we're losing speed so we're going to increase the throttle and there you go we're at 2,000 feet descent 350 knots okay that's that um, what else climbs, descends, turns um yeah high as I said we cover the uh steep turns 
And uh, this is all the stuff you would do in a Cessna as well when you're learning to fly. So, um, yeah, we talked about the steep turns. Um, oh, autopilot, yeah. Let's conclude with the lesson with autopilot. And in the le next lesson, we will talk about slow flight, which is basically uh, trying to maintain um, doing all the things we just did, but at much slower speed. So, um, so let's go over autopilot. Let's go back towards Kobuleti. Where is it? Right there. All right. So, we're roughly here, we're roughly in the direction of the coast, how about there. Let's say we want to head in this direction, and we want to be at, uh, let's say, 12,000 feet, so we pull up a bit, and let's say we want to go at 300 knots. So we increase the throttle, in pitch up a little bit, so our velocity vector is just above the horizon. Um, and we are at 300 knots, we are at 12,000 feet. Reduce the power a bit. Okay. So, autopilot, all you have to do is you click on A slash P here, and then you select barometric altitude. What that does is it uh, selects, um, a, it maintains your altitude. So, that's the, that's the only thing it does. So, let's say I turn here left, right? Um, and I, all I did is I click A, P, and this, these two dots next to B alt, which means barometric altitude, means it's trying to maintain um, altitude. And uh, you see my throttle is going down because I'm have i not touching my throttle, I'm not touching anything right now. Um, so that's all it's doing. If I wanted to maintain like a speed, I would engage the auto throttle, ATC, and um, see, and now it's at 269. So it's maintaining altitude and it's maintaining um, my speed. Um, the other one is okay. Now let's get out of the altitude one and the speed. Um, the other uh, thing is, uh, and I'm gonna go all, all over all the key binds. I should probably should have done that first. Um, I'll probably edit it in, but um, there's a couple key binds here for like, uh, for example, disengaging autopilot. Um, so actually, let's go over that right now. Adjust controls, search, uh, autopilot. You see this, it says autopilot slash nose wheel steering disengage paddle switch. Um, so also known as the paddle. So when you click that button that's at the bottom of your joystick, it's going to do several things. Um, it will uh, disengage the autopilot uh, it will, um, I think, disengage nose wheel steering, and it will also um, enable you to pull more than seven and a half Gs if you pull the paddle. I have it bound to uh, a modifier and a joystick button, so you can do whatever you want. Just remember what it is. So, for example, if I am on barometric altitude and I click on the paddle, you see the two dots go away means autopilot is off. Guys, it took me five months to figure that out. Um, it was my commanding officer who taught me that and it made a world of difference um, in my flying. Uh, you're gonna learn it here on your first flight. Uh, I'm jealous. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> turning off your autopilot, very important. Okay, uh, next thing is, uh, let's go with attitude select. So let's say I wanna go uh, up. First of all, let's add some throttle. Let's say I want to maintain this attitude. All I'm going to do is press attitude alt ATTH, and it's all the Hornet's going to do. It doesn't care about your thrust. It's going to maintain whatever alt attitude you selected. So it's this this angle of pitch and this angle of bank. Now, if I, for example, try a bit more, it's going to hold this one. See, it's, it's just holding it. If I reduce the pitch. it now it's gonna hold this pitch it's very cool uh, if you yank on it it will disengage boom and uh, the Hornet's gonna bitch at you 
Um, so that's attitude. Uh, heading select. Let's try that one. So let's say I wanted to uh, head in the direction now, roughly in this direction on the coast. Let's say heading of 325. So how do we do that? So first thing, you come here, you go to this heading button. You right click it for a couple seconds until all of this clears and each cell comes up. Then you click this button uh, and then you go with 3, 2, 5, enter. And you will notice um, on your HSI, um, so again, to get to the HSI, you're on the menu. Uh, it's this guy here, HSI, which means Horizontal Situational Indicator. You click on it. Um, this is your aircraft. This is the 360 compass rows that we talked about. We're heading in this direction here. And each cell is the heading you have selected. It's right here on the left uh, course. And course select is on the bottom right. And that's this guy over here. Uh, we're not going to worry about course select. But for heading select, we have 3, 2, 5. All we have to do is go to autopilot. Uh, let's uh, put heading select. And boom. Bada beam, bada boom. 325. Now the Hornet, is, all it's going to do is trying to hold that heading. It's not doing anything with speed, altitude, or nothing, just the heading. If you right click on this, it's going to switch to, let's say if I want to go to 330, boom, it's going to go to 330. Let's say I want to go to um, 320, or 319, boom, it goes to 319. I'm not touching anything, I'm not touching the stick right now, guys. It's doing it all automatically, it took us to that heading. If on top of the heading I want to maintain altitude, I click that, now it's going to maintain altitude. It's going to start losing speed. If I want to maintain speed, I to ATC, Auto Throttle Control, now it's maintaining altitude, speed, and heading. And you can just go and have your, uh, make yourself some tea, you know, if you brought like a thermos. Um, this is the time where you would make your tea. Uh, the last one is the radar altitude, and all of that that does is... Um, uh, let's put the paddle, so we don't have any autopilot. Uh, if we click on that, it's just not going to work because uh, the radar... Um, first of all, we're going to put it on radar. And we're just too high. The, there is no radar indication. So, um, so yeah. Uh, we'll do that in a second here. Uh, the last thing that you can do with the autopilot is if you click on, uh, it changes uh, the way that the Hornet flies. So, like right now, um, it it basically holds um, your attitude. Like if I if I uh, roll to the right, it tries to maintain that alti at attitude. If I pitch up, it will just it's almost like attitude hold, right? Um, and if I disengage it. Uh, you see, like, it doesn't hold that uh, attitude anymore. It's, it's more free. Alright, let's get down to the deck and show you that the uh, radar altimeter will work. So let's, uh, let's figure that out. Let's figure out at which altitude will the B that is flashing there turn into a R. So 9,000 feet. Pull back on the throttle when you're descending. 7,000. 6,000. Uh, there we go. So it looks altitude. like it's, it's 5,000. So below 5,000 feet, uh, you will get radar altitude readings and um, you can engage radar autopilot. So let's go over some hills real quick and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Burn the hills right there. So we're gonna go over this uh, hilly ridge line, and I will demonstrate radar uh, altitude. Okay. 
So you can see that there's hills here. So the uh, elevation that we're going to go over uh, it changes. So all I'm going to do here is demonstrate, first of all, barometric altitude. So I'm going to get low. I'm going to go AP and V alt. So even though we have radar altimeter selected, um, it's trying to hold a specific um, barometric altitude. If I switch this to barrow, it will show you exactly. This. So right now we're maintaining 1890. Um, uh, let's get rid of that. So um, yeah, you can see my the radar altimeter, 800 feet, 600 feet. You see this? This is our actual altitude that's bouncing it's AGL above ground level so our altitude above the actual ground is jumping between a thousand and six hundred feet why even though we're flying straight right and so above sea level we're eighteen hundred ninety but above ground level we're a thousand so we are actually um, you know eight hundred uh, the difference is eight hundred ninety feet uh, you know between the sea level uh, reading and the barometric reading if we keep going in this direction, we're going to hit that mountain, right? So how do we prevent that? All we have to do is go, well, either fly it or we can go autopilot and go switch to radar altitude. So now um, what it's going to do uh, is going to make us crash. Okay, hang on. Why did that not work? Radar altitude. Something's not working. Is it because I have it set so low? Let's try that. Let's try that. And okay, let's try it again. On a pilot. That is very interesting. It's trying to make me crash. Why is the greater altitude not work? What it's supposed to do, guys, is uh, maintain this. Uh, oh, I know what it's happening. It, it's trying to maintain. Um, okay, let's try. Like, okay, right now, let's say we are. Um, we want to maintain 2,000 feet radar altitude. Let's go R. There you go. So it's going to try to maintain 2,000 feet radar altitude. That's what it was. It was just too low earlier. So you see, uh, now it's trying to go to 2,000. It's below it, so it's pitching up. So it's like, okay, I got to go back up to 2,000 feet. So uh, let's uh, reduce the speed. Uh, and it was so abrupt that uh, you know it disengaged the, <laughs> the radar altitude. So this obviously works better when you are um, not over hilly areas. You know what I'm. So let's try to go somewhere flatter. This is when you want to sip uh, your uh, tea, make your tea, and you're flying like 500 feet above the ground, and um, you want to maintain that uh, clearance from the ground. So let's say. Right about here, radar altitude. Radar altitude. There you go. So, right now, it's trying to maintain somewhere around 600 feet, it looks like. So I could probably go and have a make my tea because I know that uh, it's trying to do its best to keep 540. You see how fixed it is? 550, 540, 550, 540. So when there's a tree, it's like, oh, there you go, that's a tree. That's probably like a tree. Uh, let's put the ATC on. I don't have to worry about the throttle. And that's it. This thing uh, is just trying to maintain 540 feet above ground, guys. Remember, above ground, AGL. So if there was a mountain in front of us, it would try, in theory, like and there will be mountains in front of us, it will try to um, maintain that 500 foot separation. 
So let's go to the external view. There you go. We're just trying to maintain an altitude. Okie dokie, guys. So that covers autopilot. Um, that is it for this lesson. Uh, so by now you should uh, go and practice um, what you've learned here. Go practice level turns, uh, steep turns and level, um, you know, constant uh, speed and constant uh, uh, rate of descents, um, uh, descents and climbs. Uh, go and uh, play around with the autopilot. Uh, go and do level flying, constant turns. Play with the rate altimeter, switch between, you know, parametric, uh, which right now is parametric state, 60 parametric, and 530 radar. Uh, for example, let's test this out. Will this radar altimeter actually keep me? Um, yeah, it's actually keeping me, uh, even though. So this is just displaying the radar altimeter. So, yeah. So let's see what happens when we get to this hill. Uh, but yeah, go and practice that stuff. Uh, you know how to set it up in the mission editor. You know um, the basic uh, buttons and functions. Uh, you know how to get to the HSI. As I said, this is menu, menu. This HSI, right? You get how you get there. All right, so here it goes. 500 feet. Uh, now it's 400, and so it should pitch us up. 400, 500. Yeah, you don't want to rely on it too much because. Uh, this is like re relying on a Tesla autopilot, right? When you're like eating a pizza and, and or taking a nap, you know, it's not very accurate. But yeah, it's basically it's trying to match the contour of the terrain. Like I'm not even flying this thing right now; it's just an autopilot, and I'd have to be ready to. Uh so on this hill, it should see. It's actually trying to climb to maintain that. Uh, and you can see my radar altimeter going off because um, I had set it at 600, or sorry, 400, 380 feet. And so when it broke 380 feet, uh, it gave me a, a warning. So, um, but I love to fly low, so let's forget about that, put it at 100 feet. And that's it, guys. Um, we'll see you in the next one and do some solo flights.